Hello, thank you very much uh, for coming to this uh, very special Royal Te Television Society event. We are going to be talking about video games and TV, which we do know some things about. Three or four things, yeah, probably? Four, four things. Minimum. Yeah. Um, so that will be, be good. Because um, I think there has been a bit of a resurgence recently. Obviously, um, there was you know, games on TV in the 90s with Games Master which about half of you don't look old enough to remember. <laughs> uh, but it was a thing. It was a big thing. Um, and then there's been this resurgence recently uh, with shows like Julia's Show, which we're going to hear a bit about, um, and Dara O'Brien's Go 8-Bit on Dave, which Sam and Steve and I are in, um, and which arguably uh, has, has been uh, one of the most successful sort of marriages of TV and games in recent years. Um, and I would argue that because I am in it. Um, <laughs> So I am a little bit biased. So we're going to get into all that. We're going to talk about the future of uh, games and broadcast. We're going to talk about YouTube and streaming and all the things the kids are into. Um, <laughs> and uh, yes, hopefully just have some fun. We are going to have some audience Q&A as well. So do get thinking if you've got any questions. And as uh, we just heard, if you have got questions on YouTube, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, the hashtag is RTS Games TV. Uh, so to kick off, I think we'll just introduce ourselves, shall we, a bit? Uh, yes? yes? Good. Uh, so yes, my name's Eddie Gibson. I've been a video games journalist for about 15 years, uh, writing for Eurogamer and The Guardian and other things that nobody's heard of. Um, and I'm also a comedian. I'm in a double act called Scummy Mummies, which is uh, nothing to do with video games, uh, mercifully. Um, so that's me. Uh, yes, and I am better at every, than everybody on this stage at games. Uh, apart from Julia <laughs> and Steve. Um, so, yeah, so that's me, uh, Julia. <laughs> no, he, it's, he knows it. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, my name's Julia Hardy. I uh, currently work for Radio 1. I do a monthly uh, gaming show called, very cleverly, The Gaming Show. Uh, which goes out on uh, iPlayer. Um, I've been a uh, video games journalist, well, predominantly making video game uh, like TV content for a long time. I used to do a show on Bravo that was called Game Face. I did another one on Challenge, which was called uh, The Blurb. I've been involved in kind of uh, pitching and meeting with production companies and commissioners about getting more video games on TV for a very long time. So I've had some interesting conversations uh, in, in this kind of mm -hmm. sphere that we'll maybe get into, and I'll take out some of the swearing. <laughs> um, but yeah, so probably what I do at the moment is for uh, Radio 1. Um, they're actually pushing forward quite a lot with gaming. They're quite committed, quite serious to it, which is really, really nice because obviously for that particular demographic, it's not something that is meant to be segregated. It's just part of normal life. I know it feels a bit weird, like we're supposed to sort of put gaming over here. But um, yeah, so that's me. Cool. Uh, I'm Steve. Uh, I was in a double act with Sam Pamphlon. We, uh, we created Go 8-Bit together back in 2013, um, and we were comedians who wanted to play video games and find an excuse to do that for a job. And yeah. off the back of that, I started working with yourself at Jinx TV, so I was involved in writing reviews and features there. Um, I have a live show called Wi-Fi Wars, where the audience will log in and they will play video games against each other, so we tour that around the country. Um, and I've started streaming. I'm, I stream on Twitch a few times a week as well. So that's what I am. Hi, my name's Sam. Um, I'm an actor. I was a comedian. I'm a comedian. Oh, God, who cares? In a <laughs> double act with Steve, and we just did sketches, and I don't know how any of this happened, <laughs> <laughs> to be perfectly honest. Good stuff. All right, well... Um, I'm let's... definitely the outlier yes, <laughs> on this board. Uh, let's start with your show, Julia, um, which is... Um, to Because I was, I was on it, and I was slightly confused. It is a Radio 1 show, but, like, with... Pictures. Video. So I've had to explain to my mum, she said, when's it on the radio? I'm like, it's, 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 they call it visual radio. <laughs> like <laughs> the most confusing thing in the entire world. So yes, it's radio. What? The TV. They came yeah, the TV visual stuff. radio. Well, that's a terrible that radio, idea. but with pictures. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like um, a colour black and white film. Yeah, <laughs> it makes perfect sense. Yeah. So um, Radio 1 actually makes a huge amount of uh, video content that goes out on iPlayer. And uh, yeah, so the monthly gaming show uh, can be about any variety of different things. So we uh, did one about Lara Croft's uh, legacy recently, obviously, because she's kind of surpassed gaming. We did one about accessibility in uh, gaming as well. Um, so the kind of topics can you know, vary from thing to thing, really, just whatever what's kind of like sort of hot or relevant to sort of the Radio 1 audience. But it is really, really great. You know, you get to make some really nice, you know, good quality content and really kind of deep dive into, well, deep dive for Radio 1 in terms of like going into the content, which is really, really fun. So we've had, yeah, we've had some good stuff on that. Yeah, yeah I think we've got a clip of it now. Yeah. It's time to dust off that old pair of chaps from the back of your wardrobe. 
Don't lie, we've all got them. And head into the untamed wilds of America in the follow-up to the 2010 smash hit, Red Dead Redemption. Made by Rockstar Games, the same studio that brought us the mega franchise that is Grand Theft Auto, Red Dead Redemption 2 is one of the most hotly anticipated games ever. Let's find out just why people are so keen to ride off into one of its sunsets. So Red Dead Redemption 2, why should anyone care about this game? Like, why are people so excited? Well, for a start, the first game was probably the best Western, no, was the best Western game we've ever yeah, had. Quite. That sounds like a really big sentence as well, but there haven't been a lot of great ones before Red Dead Redemption. What's going to change for this version of the game, do you think? Red Dead Redemption was really at the very end of the Wild West period. With this being a prequel, we'll actually get to see, instead of it being like the dying embers of the Wild West, we get to see it in its, in its element. Obviously, the original game was, you know, the story of John Marston. Mm -hmm. Like, how is it going to work this time out? Who are we going to be playing as? Have there been anything kind of released, any of that sort of information? Yeah, it's interesting. We're not going to be playing as John Marston uh, so far. That's what we know. We know we're going to be playing as uh, Arthur Morgan. But Arthur Morgan, from the trailers we've seen so far, is a very different character to John Marston. He's still very much in a gang doing bad things. I think Rockstar really like showing that side of uh, humans, like uh, actually finding the good in, in bad characters. But the game's called Red Dead Redemption 2 still. They've kept the redemption, which we weren't sure if they're going to do, which suggests that maybe at some point later down the line, that will change. Um, I know it looks like I'm wearing all of the clothes because I was wearing all of the clothes. <laughs> it was so cold. We're in like a weird Wild West town in Kent. Oh, I was going to say. <laughs> if you're a fan of Red Dwarf, it's where they shot uh, Gunman of the oh, Apocalypse, right? right? But there's, so there's no electricity or fires or heating of any kind. Oh. So we were all like round like this. Yeah, it was it ridiculous. Worse than Westworld, quite it, honestly. Yeah, it was a lot. I mean, I don't. Well, actually, yeah, I don't know. I'd rather be stabbed than cold. I don't know. Yeah, it's, so. a fine, it's a fine line. Um, uh, yeah. So um, when you kind of sat down to sort of come up with a concept of what the programme would be, what were the kind of aims? Because historically, it has been quite tricky for television to get games right. So we're kind of in um, a, a tricky position at Radio 1 because obviously, you know, we go out on iPlayer, which is, uh, does skew a little bit older for sort of like Radio 1. Although, you know, that demographic does kind of tune in, but it's, it's, it can be a bit difficult to sort of pitch. And I think there's always a problem with, like, who are gamers? I think this is one of the biggest issues with a lot of this because everyone thinks that there's like a one, like one show for the gamers. Gamers are hugely, you know, wildly diverse. It's like saying like, you know, like what kind of music? You're like, oh, people who like music just like music and there's one show for everybody. It doesn't really work that way. And with Radio 1, we have to assume that the audience has like a general knowledge and interest um, we can't go too deep into it because we feel like that kind of specialist coverage uh, is available elsewhere. So we tend to look at like what are the kind of trending stories, what are the biggest titles, uh, and, and kind of take that as our sort of starting point. And then, you know, kind of like try and create a show around that, whatever sort of angle we choose to go. So, for example, we did one about Battlefield 1, and obviously we touched along about kind of World War 1 in that and kind of went to DICE and talked to them. Um, so it's kind of, it's kind of weird. It, yeah, it's, it's pretty much just kind of taking the, the biggest hitters, really. I would really love to go super nerdy, but I have to kind of pull myself out of the nerd void. I mean, we've all had to bit. do that. We've all had to do that yeah. at so. times. No. Yeah, yeah. No, he's not allowed in the void. <laughs> so your show is more sort of news-based, sort of passing on information about current games and what's coming out and that, that kind so of thing. So it's, well, I mean, because it's sort of, it sits on iPhone, it will sit there for 12 months, we try and make it as evergreen as we can. So we try to extrapolate kind of stories around that. So, for example, uh, PUBG, we like went out to uh, Korea to go and meet Brendan Green because his story is incredible, how it became like the hottest game in the world. We got to like, go to the studios and meet people who are like, passionate about the game. So it's sort of things that sort of surround the game. And it, we won't necessarily review, review it, because I will go on the radio and kind of do a, like, a game of the week, and that sort of covers that. Um, it's more about kind of like looking at the bigger picture or pulling out, extrapolating something from the game that you know, has perhaps like, greater implications, that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, whereas your show, Stephen Sam, is, is, is quite different. I mean, how would you...? <laughs> yes, we don't go into any detail on anything. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, how would you, for someone who's never seen it, what is uh, Stephen Sam, the, well, Stephen Sam's Dar O'Brien's Go 8-Bit? Stephen Sam's Dar O'Brien's Go 8-Bit. It's, it's comedians playing video games. So we play games and then we have a chat about games and then we play games and we do that until it's finished. Yeah. So yeah. it's sort of like a game show. I don't know why I'm telling panel you what show. the show we're it's both It's a panel in show. Is That's about. what we're reaching for. It's a yeah. panel show. Yeah. yeah. Video games is the Sort of wasn't, I mean, yeah. I mean, in its original form, it wasn't. The, the original, when we did it in 2013, it was yeah. Games Master Drunk in a Cupboard. Was the yeah. Tagline for it was, it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It was just people <laughs> playing games 
really at each other yeah. and getting very competitive and sweary and... There was forfeits in the live show as well, so it's much yeah. more raucous and mischievous. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think you've sort of explained what it is, but uh, just for clarity, can we have a look at the video, I think please? that's best, yeah. So, uh, Sam and Tech, please approach the machine. Bring your luck. Thank you, David. Oh, lovely. It's your finest moment, isn't it? Only one button to press, because it couldn't be simpler. In <laughs> three, two, one... Let's go away. Okay. Here we go. Now Sarah is playing as the chicken. Sam is the duck. No. Sarah, oh, she's, she's jumping ahead. It's unusual. Sam. Oh! Whoa! <laughs> Sam killed by a train, which means that the winner of that round is Sarah. Sarah. Well oh, there she goes. Okay. So, you're 1-0 down. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> are you, are you rubbing it in now? No, Is that what's no, going? no, I think it's really good. I think you did really, really well. Okay, so <laughs> let's go for round two, please. Here we go. Chicken we versus duck again. It's strange, because normally it's Sam who's being a cop. Sam. Come on, Sam. Sneaky move. Oh, oh, Sarah's in the water. Carry on. Carry on. <laughs> 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 All you had to do was not die. I. <laughs> How did I, you? What? I thought I'd already won. No! Because <laughs> she had died further ahead. She had more points. You had to just jump a little bit further. You didn't. You didn't. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, good. Sam, is that bringing back happy memories for you? I got to meet Sarah Fox. <laughs> That's right. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's the only time I've ever, ever on a video game ever had that moment where you're thinking, "Yeah, got yeah, I could take my eye off the ball." You allowed and, yourself uh, to think you were good at something just for a second. Then, yeah, right? yeah. That and then that got taken away from me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So how did you mentioned you know how the show started out at Edinburgh? There, how did it go from you know this you know tiny show in a cupboard to this big show in a slightly larger cupboard with Dara O'Brien in it? Yeah, well there were loads of cupboards in between. So there was Edinburgh Fringe Festival 2013. We did four nights in a tiny little 80 seater room. So there was about 15 comedians. Still the biggest room we'd ever played. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Uh, so we started there, but it very quickly got picked up by um, a guy called Rohan Acharya, who directed our sketch shows, because he was in development at a company called DLT Entertainment. And um, so he uh, began to develop it, and we moved and had a residency in London. At, yeah, what was that venue called? Wenlock and Essex. Wenlock and Essex. Um, but for about a year, a year and a half, we were there, and then over at the Backyard Comedy Club in Bethnal Green, maybe two years. And what it was was every month, us and the cast, because there was about six of us in it, would work really hard all month putting together a new two hour long show about video games with comedians and challenges and things. And everyone in telly would say they were going to come and see it, and then they wouldn't. So for about a year and a half, it was um, everybody working really hard on the promise that someone would come and look at it, and then maybe that might lead to something. But it was really fun. Um, sometimes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I did none of the organising. I had to plug so. it all in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 But um, so it, it, it was, uh, as is still the case now, even though, it's, even though it is on the telly it was very hard to convince telly that video games would be a thing that they could put on it and that would be okay. Yeah, yeah. Because, because was the problem, was the argument, well, not enough people like video games or was it more, but how does it translate? How do we put video games on TV? I mean, I remember Steve sort of saying to me, he said, uh, you know, that there seems to be this sort of kind of received uh, knowledge that it doesn't work. Um, and I don't know necessarily why that was, but I think what happened... Hi. Hi. Uh, I think I think what it was is that you know when you're a TV producer and it's your job to take on things and spend money on them and try and get them away, you know you don't want to have things that are going to fail. So you'd rather kind of, which is kind of why people cherry pick things like, well, this is a fam let's get this famous person mm. and they're doing a thing on that's hot now and let's put those two things together and if it doesn't work, you can at least say, well, it's not my fault. Those two things should have worked yeah. because it was cool person number one and trending topic number one, and I put them together. And this didn't feel like either of them. No. So there's a lot of times trying to convince people that there is a lot of people who are really interested in yeah. this. And that, and that has sort of been borne out as well, because like, since 
Go 8-Bit yeah. went on the telly, then Chris Ramsey started to feature games on his show. Yeah. Um, obviously, Rob Beckett's thing um, has been on Channel 4 recently. Um, me and Rob, who's like the technical manager on Go 8-Bit, who does all the Wi-Fi war stuff, had meetings with um, Saturday Night Takeaway, and then like, they had Pac-Man, which uh, the guy that did all our set stuff, on there. But once Go 8-Bit happened and it got good viewing figures and that seemed to be a thing, the year after it, there was a lot of video games and lots of things, whereas the year before it, there wasn't any video games and things. Yes. Apart from maybe the more niche things like Video Game Nation that, you know, that we were involved in. But, um, yeah, so it then became received wisdom that it did work, or it, it seems to be the case. Being yeah, but then, then I think then, then there is that kind of idea, like... We'll prove them right eventually. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> well, the, 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 like we were talking before, like, oh, it does work, but then people will maybe do it slightly callously or slightly yes. cack-handedly, where they'll just kind of go, oh... Video games, and stick that into some TV, yeah. and they're going to go, well, that works now, doesn't it? Without realising that maybe there is some consideration to be had for uh, the people who watch it. Although the demographic is, is wide, it is still something that needs to kind of maybe be treated with a certain amount of respect. Yeah. It's yeah. quite easy to get it wrong. Yeah. You know, like if, you know... Well, I think there's, like, there's definitely a shift like, from when I first would meet like, production companies and commissioners and stuff, and they'd be like, no one wants to watch video games on TV, and you're like, have you been on the internet yeah, yeah, ever? Yeah. But in the same breath, we'd be talking about their own children like completely consuming Minecraft yes. videos, and you're like, you've just talked to me about 10 minutes about Minecraft and Minecraft, can you not, this, why is there this sort of disconnect? Mm. And I feel like that's shifting now. Weirdly now, because of eSports, so I have to tend to people like, come up to me, and they're like, oh, wow. I want to do eSports. It's like saying, I want to do a sport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, like, yeah. well, what eSports? Why? Yeah. And, like, for this particular channel, you're never going to get them to watch League of Legends. Don't sure. be silly. Sure. I appreciate you like the idea of the viewing numbers, but they're never going to watch that on your platform. No. Um, so I feel like there is that sort of shift forward. And weirdly, with eSports, it's people because they see the money and they see the revenue. Yeah. And, and, and we're streaming as well now, I guess, as well. We're sort of some of the things yeah, but it's, it's still really frustrating where, you know, so many people game. It's not like this weird niche thing anymore. And... Again, we're still having to sort of constantly fight to be heard. And really, you know, maybe we need to be a bit more aggressive as gamers and just be like, look, we are the future of entertainment. You know, people don't watch TV in the same way anymore. Like, you know, people watch TV at home and they're looking for engagement. They're looking for something else. They're on their phones at the same time. Whether it's they want to play more video games or whether they want TV itself to be more gamified in some way where you can interact more with it and it be less passive. But, like, the proof is there that it's happening and it's sort of one of those things where it's like you really need to embrace it and accept that, okay, maybe I don't understand gaming, but it is here to stay and it is the future of entertainment. I mean, I don't really get on with football. I don't particularly like it, but I respect it and I understand why there needs to be content for sure. it. It's just, it feels like there's a huge lack of respect for gaming. Like it's still, oh, nerds pads in the bedrooms yeah, yeah, covered yeah. in crisps. We really are at the forefront of entertainment and it's not nerdy and it's not niche anymore and you desperately need to adapt yeah. and start making content for it. Also, no one eats crisps anymore. It's all quinoa. Is it? Yeah. Covered in quinoa. Yeah. That's, ah, that's, 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 that's the millennial to. gamer, yeah. right? Yeah, a bit of avocado. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I can't afford a house. Yeah. Um, I, th I think uh, one of the nicest compliments I've heard about Go 8-Bit is when people say, you know, oh, I love the show, I'm a big gamer, but also my wife loves the show and she doesn't even like video yeah, games. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my kids love the show and they've never heard of Pac-Man. You know, they've barely played Mario Kart, and it's, and it's a family show, which is amazing, considering the amount of filth that I put in those you BTs. Do. You, you do, do your best. Yeah. Did my yeah. best. You do your best. But somehow, it just didn't work. Um, so I think, you know, hopefully, is, that, is, there, is there a message in that that, that you, like you were saying, it doesn't have to be super no. highbrow, nerdy People stuff. People like to compete. People like competitive play. People like bragging rights and going, no, 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 no. I mean, like, that was why Goldeneye was super popular when it had, like, split screen, because you could basically just irritate your friends yeah, and have yeah, bad, yeah. like, that is, that is intrinsic. It's whether, you know, you play video games, you play normal games, you do sports. People like to win. And it's about finding sort of the right game for your channel or for your show. Like, you could put gaming content anywhere. It's just about the right thing for you because it's so diverse. Mm. It's not just old AAA titles or weird little indies or esports. It's a whole spectrum of different stuff that's there. Yeah. Well, go bit isn't really necessarily about games. It's like yeah. what Julia's saying. It's, no, it is, Sam. It is. Ah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Got no, uh, in the sense that it's about uh, competition mm. and getting... It's about Hopefully mates. funny people together. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then it was just put through the prism of games, the prism of games, um, because Steve is so into games. And he was like, well, let's just take a Nintendo Wii up to Edinburgh and play it. And, um, but really, the show had to be about 
funny people being silly together. Mm. So that's what the show is. It's just through games. And that's why I think the show hasn't alienated gamers too much. Like, I, you know... I think as long as it's done with love, as long as it's done with, yeah, with love, and yeah. coming from a place like you know not, you're, yeah, we're not you're passionate to sort of say, about games or like yeah. these look at these idiots or whatever. We're not trying to go. It's not, we're not going into any huge amounts of detail or mm. and it's not it's not kind of overtly um, in depth, so it would push people away. Hopefully, it straddles that kind of thing where, like you're saying, we get messages from families and on Twitter, people saying, "I watch it with my kids and my wife. My wife hates games, but she likes the show, and yeah. we actually will sit down and watch it." So. Because it's not necessarily about games. But it's, all, it's, all, it's also where, where, we jo where we joke about you and, you know, we're, we're games and you're not, and you're sort of out, outside of that. But it is actually probably even more so in the live version than the TV show, which sort of so softened everything around it. But you're, you are a non-gamer. You don't get it and you're not that into it. So you, it was very deliberate that we had you, when we did the original live show and through the TV show as well, that you want somebody who isn't big into games but can get on board with it and have a go and enjoy it and you're their way in like Conan O'Brien I mean that's just fantastic yeah. like brilliant like you know as a gamer it's brilliant it's you see someone like playing something that you, that you there's a lot of assumed knowledge to and just like really just finding the humor yeah. and the silliness in it and it's I think as long as you're coming from that sort of place of like willingness to learn and you're not sort of looking at it in a weird way gamers gamers so desperately, desperately want there to be TV content that's for them. You know, there was a huge amount of different shows. Obviously, you were talking about Games Master. Cybernet, actually, on ITV, was mm -hmm. the longest-running uh, video game show because it was that weird robot that they just kind of yeah. revoiced. Mm -hmm. That was weird. Like, they are desperate for... Oh, here's the thing. So, I thought for a lot of time... You know, to sort of make a, a, a gaming show, it would have to be something that would appeal to, like, a really big audience, and I still think that there's a space for that. But actually, more recently, I've been thinking, you know, there are enough gamers out there. Why don't? Why should we have to change it? You know, just to appeal to a wider audience. Why can't there be a gaming show? There are enough gamers out there. There are enough people who are interested in Red Dead Redemption, in God of War, in like FIFA and things like that, and they want to know about these things. <laughs> Stick it on at 2 a.m. They will find it. They'll watch it on catch up. But yeah. they are so desperate to have television say that it's okay to be a gamer because they've been marginalised for such a long time. And this is why YouTube and Twitch have taken over because gamers were really ignored, so they just all went out and made their own content. And you might be thinking, well, you know, with all, like, YouTube and Twitch, why bother? But there's still something about production values. There's still something about being a TV channel and getting access that, you know, IGN or Eurogamer perhaps potentially couldn't, yeah. you know, and giving them something that, that they wouldn't necessarily get online. I was yeah. just thinking, I was just made myself giggle there because um, <laughs> I do. Uh, <laughs> that, you know, that for games to be on TV does seem at the moment like that, that show that you're envisioning would probably end up having a very low budget and being buried somewhere. Yeah. Because they would, they, you know, even though gamers are a massive audience, there would, be, there would certainly be concerns that they wouldn't find the audience there. Mm. So they have to kind of soften everything. Mm. But they don't soften match of the day. <laughs> and then I said in my head, I just had a thing like Gary Licker saying, oh, it was a brilliant goal, Alan. Alan, what's a goal? And then like, well, uh, a goal is when he kicks it in the net. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah. that's one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like we have the VTs before yeah, yeah. every football match. I could be like, Arsenal play in red. They're yeah. called the Gunners. Yeah. 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 A little animation. Yeah. 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 Although, actually, I would watch that because hilarious. Oh, that would be yeah. hilarious. I would watch a football thing for that. Yeah. But that is literally the only football fact I know. I yeah. don't know any other. Arsenal is so red. Okay. I, I may not be the one for the job. Um, before we get into the YouTube, have we had any uh, Twitter questions, James? Uh, I've had comments about trying not to eat the mic, so that's that's quite good. I mean, I'm on a <laughs> budget, so I have to get you know eat wherever I can. <laughs> We've got two particularly interesting questions. Um, I'll keep their identity, uh, you know, reveal just in case it's one of the RTS people. Uh, <laughs> we're not. No, 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 I'm only joking. Um, so, we have one lovely question here. Do you think there's too much rose tinting around the so-called golden age of gaming telly? Any attempt at a gaming show seems to get shot down by lots of gamers for not being games master. <laughs> oh. People I've really, really, that. really love <laughs> that. Yeah. That's never come up. Yeah. People, like, gamers are obsessed with Games Master. Any time you mention anything about people, but Games Master, even before you finish the sentence, but Games Master. Um, it was great. It was, it was actually um, under the umbrella of, like, Channel 4 Sport, yep. weirdly. Yeah, really weirdly. Um, I think, like, you know, everything that's kind of happened since then has always been sort of a, a huge kind of compromise. And Games Master, it felt amazing. They would go to, like, these weird, like, 
I don't know, oil refineries or something? Where the hell were they half the time in those like weird places? Yeah. And then everyone's playing video games together. I mean, it was just, yeah, it was done yeah. with such kind of passion and Dominic Diamond was amazing. It was yeah. done with such passion and also um, sort of ignorance because there was nothing else yeah. like it. And I interviewed, a few years ago, I wrote a big long article about Games Master for Eurogamer.net. Um, and I interviewed a lot of the people who were involved with Dominic Diamond and um, oh, my mate, Perry. brain's gone, Dave, Dave Perry, Perry uh, who still hate each other, which is hilarious. Yes, great. Um, and all these people, and Jane Hewland, who actually was the woman who got the show made in the first oh, place. Yeah, yeah. Um, and she didn't play video games or anything, and she, but she had this son, she was a single mum, and he loved the games, and then she did get into them. And then um, she kept trying to explain it to all these TV people and they just said, oh no, no, and we don't really get it and it won't work. And yes, she got a guy who I think was Canadian and worked at sports at Channel 4. So he, he knew from Canada that games were a big thing and he was willing to take it on. And all she did was, in terms of a pilot, she had her son's, I think, 10th birthday party and she just filmed this little boy and his mates playing video games and that was it. And then she just made a tape of that and she gave it to Channel 4 and they commissioned the show. Wow. Um, but that's the 90s. I don't. <laughs> I feel like that sort of thing probably doesn't happen that's anymore, what we did. which is a shame. <laughs> yeah. I just filmed Steve playing some games. Well, you went to a 10 year old party. I saw how excited his little face was. <laughs> I said, well, he should have a little TV show, shouldn't he? Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. But then she, and then she said they made the show, and she, she, it really hit her how big it was um, when she was walking home from school one day with her son. Uh, or something. She said, anyway, they, they were walking home, Games Master was on. And in every single front room they passed, wow. there was a little boy or a little girl watching Games Master on a telly. And that was Amazing. the first time she kind of went, oh, like, this is, this is a big thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then there was this sort of big gap afterwards, wasn't yep. there? Why, why do you think there wasn't any more good games TV? There was, there was some good games TV, but Bad Influence was good. Yeah. And but it's... nothing really took off in the same way as Games Master. And then kind of nothing was made Moore. for about a decade. Yeah, well, did, Patrick Patrick Moore was... did he even know he was giving out tips? Did he know? Was he aware of what was going I on? I asked him about mm -hmm. it. He, no, he had no idea what was going on. Really? Um, <laughs> and okay. they would say, well, how much? He just did it for a laugh. And they would say, how much do you, do you want for this job, Patrick? And he would go, oh, just give me a bottle of whiskey. And then they would give him this, they would film it all in one go, and then he would, they would drink the whiskey with him. And then he would start talking about his controversial views on General Pinochet. Um, wow! So, that's, this story's taken a slight turn. It's, it's, it's all in this article, I'm telling you. It was, it was amazing hearing how it all started. But oh yeah, God. but why, why this, this gap then? After that first raft of shows, Bad Influence and um, Games Master and all this, and then sort of nothing for quite a long time. No, no, I, I, I don't know about the gap. I think, the, the, to, to, to go back to the original question briefly, is uh, about the rose tinting, is actually, I think there's a, a particularly with... I mean, my Twitter feed's going to be horrible now, but particularly with gamers, there is a small but very vocal group of gamers who tend to set what the received wisdom is about what gamers think, because they shout loud and they're everywhere, and they, po they poison the well a little bit. Cause there, there are some that say, Games Master is the best thing ever, and this is rubbish and that is rubbish, but there are a few, actually, and I'm sure you've found this, because I, I know you stream on Twitch, and we, and we do as well together, as, and um, most of the gamers on the internet are really nice mm. and want to enjoy gaming things and are perfectly reasonable people. Yeah. But by definition, perfectly reasonable people don't bother to be dreadful people on the internet at 3 a.m. It's hard to and, be very loud about being reasonable. Yes, yeah. <laughs> by, yeah. by its very nature. So I think sometimes the debate gets pulled unreasonably, as it does in every area of life now, I guess, but it, it gets polarised and becomes this extreme thing, which actually most gamers went, yeah, Games Master was all right, and Guy it's all right. I like games, I'll probably watch it. And that's yeah. about where most of us sensibly see it. So I don't, I don't think it is necessarily as... I think it just, it's, it's it. just because it was so long running and everyone, yeah. it was so visually very different to anything else, so it yeah. kind of tends to stick in the mind a little bit more than Indeed. most other gaming shows. Was the, hang on, this is, well, this is me with your last question, Ellie, <laughs> uh, but I'm kind of redirecting the question because I don't know. Is it because consoles went a bit rubbish? <laughs> well, I because mean... I played on, because well, I only say that because there was no gaming TV when I stopped playing. So I stopped playing games, gaming TV stopped. It's your fault. I started playing games, <laughs> TV, gaming show came back. Is it me? Or yes. Is, yeah, yes. No. So but he didn't I really thinking, answer I feel, like in that, in that, I feel like gaming consoles kind of went through a different cycle or something. There was a so lot of kind of... A cycle? Yeah, cycle. Because it went Master System, Mega Drive, Super Nintendo, and then it was all, like, CD ones. Sam, and you've been on failed. Wikipedia. I haven't, I haven't. <laughs> My phone's over there. But wasn't there a spell before the PlayStation came out where 
it was all a bit rubbish? No. OK. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, th I think the thing with PlayStation was PlayStation was cool and it was sort of an older demographic yeah. it felt, and oh, yeah. it was less kind of Sonic and Mario and cartoony sort of bumbling about and it was all, you know, spaceships and Red Bull in a nutshell. Yeah. It, I mean, uh, Game Master was large, although, although I'm sure people again would argue against it, but Game Master skewed towards kids. I was a kid and I watched Game Master. It was on quite early. Yeah. And actually, with, with that sort of adolescence and maturing of games with, with, with Sony, is maybe, maybe Telly felt more comfortable with it when it was a thing for kids and you could just sort of not have to take it yeah. seriously, whereas actually, even now, we're struggling to act... To, that programme where we do all talk about God of War for now, because it's amazing and there's so much to, to dive into, about it, whether it's the graphical design or whatever it is about it, is no-one felt comfortable having a grown-up conversation about a thing for kids, yeah. which obviously gaming isn't, but that non-gamers think, think that's what it is. And also, yeah. if you're making something for kids, maybe there's the slight idea that you don't have to worry about it being picked apart so much because kids are less likely to be that judgy. Well, not now. Kids are dreadful now. Right? They've got phones. <laughs> but, you know, back then, kids would be like, yeah, video games are on TV, that's fantastic. Yeah. And now, maybe they wouldn't be but so... But there is that sort of thing as well, where they, um, like, from a parent's sort of point of view, where they sort of think, you know, video games are all, like, terribly violent, and it's all about shooting. Obviously, Minecraft was huge in kind of shifting that sort of uh, mindset. But, yeah. And then maybe it became like, you know, well, you couldn't have it on, like, early during the day because, you know, guns and zombies. Yeah. yeah. Don't my kids seeing that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but if, if Games Master did definitely have a more kiddie feel. Though if you watch it back now, which I did have to do for some hours for this article, it's absolutely filth. filthy. Filth. It's <laughs> just... <laughs> it is, no, it's Dominic Diamond surrounded by busty mermaids holding up a seafood platter and going, the girls have given me crabs. I mean, it's... <laughs> that's literally what's in it. It's lit that's, that's, and that's an actual excerpt yeah. from the show. So and do, as a kid, I'm just thinking... Well, yeah. I hope oh, wow, you like cool. raps. Yeah, <laughs> just yeah. Lovely. There's a bit with Sam Fox in a wet. Oh, I won't. Anyway, um, so yes, uh, do do. If you have got a question, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, use the hashtag RTS Games TV. And did you say we had another question, we, James? We, we actually have exploded a bit. We've got quite a lot more. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Steve said that thing about yeah, gamers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. Yeah. It's all, yeah. Oh, um, pick a good one. Nothing about loose. Brexit. And, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, hold on. Give me five minutes. Uh, no, we we. I think this is quite an issue because. A lot, there's a lot of questions about Xbox, we'll get onto that, not spoilers alert. Um, so, one lovely question here. Do you think there's still a space for gaming on kids' TV, e.g. bad influence, or is that audience on YouTube now? Ooh. Dun, dun, dun. Well, I mean, they are on YouTube, aren't they? But that's yeah, probably because they're on. Um, I don't know. I think, I think there's always a place on TV to have sort of gaming content. Um, I think it's obviously about finding the right thing. Probably getting some of those YouTubers to, to host can be a bit hit or miss. Obviously, Ali A has his sure. show uh, on there. I think that's on. There's the also a really boring there. pragmatic thing about it, which is um, that it, it turns out getting clearance and getting permission to use video games on telly is really expensive and time consuming. And that's not necessarily something that lends itself to kids' TV. So I don't, I don't know. Unless all of a sudden CB has got loads of money I don't know about. I don't, I don't think. There's necessarily the budget. I mean, Michaela, who's one of our execs, is here, and she'll nod at me and confirm it's horrific trying to get clearance for the games. Mm -hmm. So you'd have to be, you'd have to really want to make it. And mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know how practical it'd be. Or am I wrong? Has CBeebies got all the money? Is that where the money is? Oh, CBeebies is is huge. Yeah, is it? yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's where they. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. The clearance thing is is yeah definitely an issue. And also, what I, I did learn uh, a fact the other day, um, which. I found quite shocking, um, and I wrote a column about it. So someone I know um, who um, knows someone from YouTube, she was sleeping with someone at YouTube, and um, she, <laughs> he told her that uh, apparently um, most people who watch video games on YouTube have never played a video game. Mm. Um, now, so just to be clear, because I wrote a column about this, mm. and I got um, a lot of crap from people in the comments saying, oh, well, you know, you, you watch people play video games on Go 8-Bit. And just to be clear, I'm not saying... Well, I'm, I'm wrong. saying is they've never played a video game. Yeah, I'm not saying it's wrong. Yeah, yeah. But, and I do find it a bit weird that you would watch videos of something that you could do yourself. Because I get people watch Formula One without ever having driven a Ferrari. <laughs> I get that. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I watch the Bake Off. Um, I can barely make a scone. But I, yeah. I, I have made a scone, you know, badly. Um, and I, I was quite... 
I mean, do you, do you also think that's weird or is that just me? Well, I mean, with things like Minecraft, I suppose it's always about kind of the story that they sort of, you know, because you, like, you know, the, the content creators around Minecraft kind of put themselves and their personalities into it. So there's, it's, it can be quite sort of fascinating. But, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, is it just the, you know, they want to kind of, like, be involved in these stories and then it's always, like, this sort of sequential content so you get, like, really involved in, in, in that kind of thing? It's um, becoming, it's becoming passive again. Maybe it sort of does that, it goes round and actually people don't, you know, people are watching games and people think it's like it's like basically it's like vaping. So okay, vaping is for people who smoke cigarettes and want to stop smoking cigarettes and then vape. But kids now are just vaping. starting vaping. You're like, no, no, no. That's the thing you do to, to not do it. So I guess, you know, vape and watch video games, never play video games. I guess it's just that passive interaction. Not in, in interaction, just passively watching something because it's entertaining. But also video games are it's weird. quite expensive. Mm. So I think there is that huge thing of you know, we sort of forget, you know, getting, you know, stuff to review and things like that. But it can be like a really expensive thing. Like some people maybe only get like a couple of games a year, you know, if, if they're lucky. It's not like, oh, I'll just play a bit of this, bit of that. So, you know, they sort of maybe get the chance to play or like see games that they wouldn't normally uh, have, be able to play. Do you know what I mean? I mean, there must be some sort of... But yeah, I mean, you'd still understand that from the point of that, like, they wouldn't have access to all the games, but you'd still think they would have... Had one. They would have like one, or maybe have played them at friends' houses. Or maybe it, their parents are quite strict and they're and they're watching slightly older. Or maybe rated it's games. another trend. It's another trend. The idea that well, I don't want to play them. Well, they're like straight them. edge. They're like straight yeah. edge gaming yeah. content. Like, gaming we don't con consume I'm a gaming gaming content content watch content. Watch I'm like I straight edge. Keep myself pure, but I just yeah. watch it. Maybe. <laughs> Yeah, that's a new thing. The, the, YouTube, the, the YouTube thing I'm not as close to because I'm, I'm more Twitch and that's what I've been focusing on for the last few months. But I think certainly the thing I've not been able to afford the games is a thing. I've had people a number of times message me or, or talk, talk in the chat about, I can't afford to buy these games at the moment, but I, I, I can sort of passively, I can see all the cool stuff in the games, so that's a thing. But certainly a big part of the Twitch thing, which I had no idea and is now very much the, the heart of what it is that, that I'm doing with the guys on there, is it's about community. It's, it's actually about a place to hang out. Yeah. The, 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 the way I describe it, I'm trying to explain to people who don't have a clue what Twitch is, is that it's like talk radio, or it's mm. like radio, but instead of playing music every three minutes or having a call, there's video games going on in the background, but it's really a So you play, because I am uh, 40, I don't really understand it. Yeah. You play video games live, in real time, yes. yeah. and people watch it and comment and have a chat. Yeah, and so there's a chat, they're all having a little chat, and we're all, there's text, and I'm keeping on that, and we're having a conversation, they're talking to each other, and we're building that, and actually around that, then what you've got... Uh, with what we've been doing is there's a Discord group, which is like a, a chat forum, which is for people who are fans of Go 8-Bit. And so when I'm not streaming, they're all in there hanging out. Uh, some of them have raced me up today and they're sat there. Um, but there's this family of people. And then when I do live shows, they might come along to that. So actually, they're coming out and doing that. Or the other night, we had a lovely thing, which is a perfect example of some of the nice things that happen on Twitch, because I know the bad people are on the internet saying horrible things to me. But the nice people, on Sunday nights, I was doing a stream. And there's a guy, 73-year-old guy in America called Piano Impro Man, who um, he's, uh, he's retired, and he will listen to 15 seconds of any song you like and then play a version of that. And his wife, Mindy, is sat at the computer talking to you and taking your requests, and their dog sometimes runs in. And uh, he was going to have to stop streaming because he needed to raise $4,000 to have uh, an eye operation. He couldn't do it anymore. He's got cataracts and something else, his insurance doesn't cover it. And on Twitch, you can do a thing called a raid, where at the end of your stream, you take all your lovely friends and you go and watch someone else and you sort of carry yeah, yeah. It, pay it forward. And within an hour of us wandering over there, the, and one, a couple of the guys are over there, they'd given this guy the other $2,000 he needed, and now he's getting an eye operation. So there's this perception that it's, oh, it's passively watching people play games, but it isn't. It's community. It is it's, community. It's about people, because actually, and this is true of telly and radio things as well, there's a disconnect, and there's... And it won't go eight bits, well. there's a shininess and a distancing to television, which the internet doesn't have. You can talk to the person that you're watching, you can engage with the people that are there, mm. and you can experience something with other people. Yeah. And I think particularly for kids these days, if you are just sat at home and you're not, you're not really playing out in the streets because you're not allowed to because of all the dreadful things And you're things not allowed to have control of the TV necessarily Indeed. as well, so you're online. So you can engage and yeah. you can connect. It's, 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 the, it's a playground, it's a, it's a, it's a community centre, it's a place to meet because now we do that from the safety of doing it through a computer rather than going to the pub. And that's the same, it's the same for eSports, it's in the same yeah. street, the same as sports, you know, turning up and like, so say for example, you know, these people aren't playing games at all, but then yeah, it's about kind of meeting up and seeing, the, and like obviously in your, in Twitch and on Twitch and in your Twitch rather, um, that sounds a bit weird. Um, in my Twitch. In your Twitch. Yes, up in my your Twitch. Twitch. Up your Twitch. Up my Twitch. A different <laughs> thing. Um, you know, you see the same people come back time and time again and you have scheduled times when you go online and these people will come back and you get to know them and they get to know each other and then part of the appeal is coming back and, you know, it's, it's like a safe place or 
or say, for example, I'll talk about uh, sort of mental health issues. Is it something that affects my life? Then sometimes they'll kind of bring up stuff that's going on, and it's like a support group in a way, and yeah. it's actually really lovely. I mean, you think that these kind of online comments and, and interactions would be quite hateful because that's all that we really see on Twitter, but actually, within the gaming community, it's incredibly friendly, incredibly supportive. Yeah. And six months ago, I would be one of the people who sneered at it and thought it was weird, and now it's my favourite thing about doing it because it is. When it's like doing a radio show. When you told me what it was, blew my mind. <laughs> <laughs> blew my mind. Yeah. He said, "Oh, there's this thing. Um, you play games, people watch you playing games." I was like, oh, "Okay, you're gonna have to stop telling me these things now because I don't understand it." But it's amazing. Yeah. It really is. But you're also like that with like contactless payment and you know, how just <laughs> life in general. <laughs> you don't Ramp, even touch it. Ramps I don't know how there. tape cassettes work because <laughs> you press record and play, and the radio went on the tape. <laughs> how did that happen? Okay, well, that's, that's a for, different that's question. For another time. No, no, for another time. Um, yeah. <laughs> but going back to esports, you mentioned esports, which obviously is this huge global yeah. billion dollar business, and yet weirdly sort of niche at the same time mm -hmm. in terms of a lot of people. Yeah. It's not really in the mainstream. Do no. you think esports could ever be as big as, I don't want to say a proper sport, but a proper sport? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, the thing is, esports has grown sort of grassroots. It's grown through like support of the, you know, the people who make the game and sort of various different companies. It's reached such huge numbers without any help from the mainstream media. So there is this kind of weird thing where sometimes, uh, you know, uh, channels or different outlets will kind of be like, oh, we want to do something on this. And, you know, Riot are a bit like, why? I don't, we don't really need you. Like, they don't no, they really. Don't need, they don't need telly. They don't need telly uh, at all. No. So that's, that's quite interesting sort of within itself. But again, it is, you know, it's, it's the same as following your favourite football team and you get to go to these, you know, matches or you know, and watch everything. And, <laughs> matches. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, you get to go to these places and it's the same experience of, you know, being in, like, a, a stadium when everyone's kind of cheering. And I would say more exciting than football because football's just, like, a bunch of guys playing fetch on some grass. You I mean, really I've got it in for football yeah. today, Julia. I mean, um, it's like you're deliberately winding Twitter up. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, and like with video games, there's a lot more kind of going on. There's a lot more kind of like layers to it. And it is, again, having that sort of like shared knowledge in the same way football fans will like bring out these bizarre stats from like the 70s and be like, oh, well, I actually think this. And it's about being kind of the yeah. cleverest person in the room about a particular thing. Yeah. And there's so much sort of knowledge and shared knowledge there. Um, I think that esports definitely has that potential. I think the way that uh, America kind of looks at it and sort of career in places like that, it is kind of like ESPN grade yeah. sort of, you know, presenting with ties and stuff like that. I think the fundamentals of competitive play could go anywhere because I think that's just within our nature to sort of compete with each other. So, yeah, I'm quite excited to see what it's happens. It's definitely with bigger than badminton. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. When was the last time you watched badminton on the telly? Oh, I like a bit of badminton. I was going to say, beyond League of Legends or badminton, what would you rather watch? League of Legends has got like a giant like dragon thing. Yeah. Badminton's got shuttlecocks. Yeah. So. <laughs> so you just like the word cocks. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> good stuff. Um, so, uh, yes, do you, want, do you want to do another YouTube question, James? Have Shall we? One? Yes, let's go to the Why Twitter. not? I feel like I'm really not doing the uh, sort of stereotype of millennials looking at their phones. Any, I feel like I'm just proving them, proving them all wrong. <laughs> um, so, well, we've got quite a lot of questions here, guys. Um, so, let's go for... Any a, personal mm. ones? That's always good. Oh, there you are. Have we got any dates meeny, meeny, lined meeny, up? Meeny, meeny, <laughs> That'd be good to know. Well, we've got one regarding uh, gaming battles. So. Okay. The oh, gaming yeah. Interest, yeah. yeah. Um, anyone who watches films knows that BAFTAs are the British version of the Oscar Awards. I feel like mm -hmm. it's an accent. Uh, surely an obvious way to get gaming's proverbial foot in the door is to air the BAFTA Video Games Awards on TV. Would that be a hard sell to TV execs? Oh, I think we need to ask the TV execs. I mean, this year um, I was hosting the video game, uh, uh, video game BAFTAs, um, and it was going out on every single platform imaginable. You name a platform, it was going out on. But I think that you know, BAFTA are very, very keen to have gaming seen on a par, you know, with uh, television and everything else. And I think maybe that is a really simple, easy way of television in some way kind of saying that gaming is relevant and having respect for the medium to broadcast something like that. But I mean, I, I mean, I don't know, but yeah, we, we get some celebs now. Do we get a yeah. Celeb, yeah. few celebs here and there? They let Dara go, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. they let him go. Well, it's like his eighth year running. I know. Yeah. You get invited this year? No. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, that's okay. awkward. <laughs> <laughs> um, should we have some audience Q&A, do we think? Should we, yeah. should we go to that? Has anyone got <gasps> a Q or an A? <laughs> Why not? Go for it. This chap here Everyone's just behind you. Sorry, I saw him first and then, yeah. Hiya. I was just wondering, 
have, having both spoken about how hard it was to convince t TV commissioners that there is something in having TV shows about video games, what got your shows over the line? How did you change their minds? Um, well, with Radio 1, uh, I spent just like a couple of years of just being around. I, I started doing a, a documentary called uh, Rockstar Gamers, where I was interviewing uh, you know, different YouTubers like Ali A, KSI, things like that, because that was just at the point where they were really earn, starting to earn good money and was talking to them. And then kind of was just sort of around whenever they kind of needed anything. And just every time I went to the office, I was like, guys, you know what's really popular? Games. Yeah. <laughs> For like about two years. And then, um, yeah, and then I just got taken on as sort of one of their sort of, you know, presenters to, to do it. It was, yeah, it, it was slow, but they were very keen and very receptive. But it was just kind of finding, again, finding what works specifically for them, because it is quite a specific thing, you know, depending on the outlet. Mm. Yeah. What about you guys? Did you, what did you do? Tell us the seedy story. We had, we had a Rohan Acharya, who was the guy who <laughs> we knew who picked it up, and he, it would have been so, all, a lot along that journey, which for him was three years to get on the telly, at any point he could have just gone, which is not normally that long a journey, really, for trying to get something made, is it? Yes, all right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the, 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 yeah, the amazing thing about that is, at, at any point, Rohan could have gone, well, why don't we have Steve and Sam killed and we'll get, I don't know, it was, a, I don't know, Rob Beckett and pick another funny man. Because it would have been a man because it's Dave, wouldn't it? They're sort of excuse that way. Um, uh, yeah, fine. So Josh Whittacombe and Rob Beckett. Um, and if they, then it would have got greenlit immediately. Um, but Rohan really fought our corner selection because it was it came from us and we began uh, we we created it and he wanted that authenticity. So he could have got it made quicker if he just sacked us. But he very kindly didn't. But a big should part, have. You should have. Yeah. It'd be much should've. easier. Yeah. Uh, I would have. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but also a big part a big part of it certainly was getting Dara on board because Dara had a relationship with the channel before, but he wasn't doing anything with them at the moment. Um, and I. I believe that when Dara is on that channel, it, it does very, very well. Um, but what was very, very lucky for us was that that was a great fit because Dara is the best at hosting panel shows. He's a massive gamer. And mm. when, when he came and saw the live show, which he did a couple of times, him telling them it was a thing was yeah. worth far more than me, Sam or Roe, telling them it was a thing because Dara has a, a weight and an authority to his opinion, which is... So you need a celebrity um, mentor in that stroke ambassador. Yeah, we do. We did. There you go. There you did. go. It's very easy. Just get Dara O'Brien to be in your television yeah. show. Yeah. And yeah. then yeah. you done. can do what you like. Yes. Yeah. Very simple. But it is, because <laughs> because and, and sometimes people are funny about it, but it, te most television, you know, the BBC is slightly different, but te television is a commercial proposition, and the programmes are just to fill the gaps between the adverts that pay for it all. So if the thing that you're making isn't going <coughs> to generate enough income, then it, it can't be on the thing. So it... It's fine that that's the way it is, because that's what commercial television is, but it's very hard when you just want to make a thing that people want it to make sure it makes a profit. Cause yeah. And it wasn't the first idea you pitched, because the first idea was Sam's badminton show, wasn't it? Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's still in development. Oh, so that's Sadminton. Sadminton, yeah. yeah. It's just yeah. people crying while playing yeah, badminton. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I would watch that. Yeah. Um, uh, yes, we've got another question here. You, you mentioned BAFTA's uh, video awards, I did, uh, gaming awards, I didn't know there were any, but BBC Three, isn't that, wouldn't that be perfect for BBC Three, stick it straight on high player? Does BBC Three do anything about gaming at the moment? Um, not hugely, no, I mean, yeah, it's, uh, it's quite true, because I think sort of Radio One, visual radio, and uh, what BBC Three does is, is, is sort so of a nice. little bit, it's quite, it's quite, it's quite similar. Um, but that's not for the want of trying, of trying to get you did, to They did, because you hosted it when they did the eSports. Oh, yeah, yeah. They did League of Legends on 3, didn't they? They did, yeah, League of Legends. That was quite a, that was quite a long time ago. That was like mm. BBC Three and BBC Sports sort of co-production, but that was like yeah. a number of years ago. Yeah. But even then, that was, that was quite interesting in that. So they, uh, they showcased the quarterfinals for the League of Legends Worlds, and it was uh, myself and Deb from Radio mm. One, and then we had sort of two kind of League of Legends experts, and it was you know, run as like a full you know, BBC Sport proposition. And I remember talking to Dev, and Dev was a bit worried, because he was like watching loads of Twitch and being like, oh God, what if they ask? I was like, you're not there to, you know, you're not there to be the expert. You're there to kind of run the show and make sure it goes really smoothly. We have the casters there yeah. who are known within that community to sort of bring that sort of level of knowledge. And um, when it all kind of went out, and we were like, oh, 
OK, what did it say online? Because yeah. everyone was sort of expecting it to be quite hateful. Yes. And actually, it was glowingly positive. They're like, they're saying really nice things on Reddit. I was like, you sure you're on the right Reddit? Yeah, like, yeah. .com? Yeah, you're on that yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, oh, OK. Um, and the thing is, gamers were so excited that finally, on, you know, proper telly, you've got something that they're really passionate about. And they can finally say to the parents, oh, that thing I like is on the BBC. And they're so eager to sort of have that kind of stamp of approval um, and rightly so because you know it should so it was um it was a really interesting thing that sort of happened and it, yeah it went really really well mm. all right another question there's a lady here time to play past the mic thank you hi, uh, hi my yeah. name is variety d i'm a stand-up comedian all the way from south london um which part of all, south london where in south london i'm originally brixton but now i'm fortin heath Oh. Yes. Are like you always? <laughs> yes. Yeah, 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 you did, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, also, sorry, I was late. But, yeah, um, my question is, do you feel as if uh, the United States has a lot more, um, well, then again, everyone knows it has a lot more platforms, but do you think we could ever reach a level to the way they do their things? You know, like in San Diego, they have their like, Comic Cons, and their Comic Cons are phenomenal. You know, they've got different categories and everything going on. We have our ones, so like, yeah, dress up day. You know, so... Yeah. You know, we're trying to get there, but we don't have that, that yeah. feeling or like E3 or something. Yeah, I mean, I think like there's a slightly different attitude in America where it's, it's sort of slightly more accepted to be a gamer. Like, yeah. I, I don't know, like, and if you like Call of Duty, it's quite like bro y. Yeah, 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 yeah it's yeah, quite yeah. like. And it, I think they're just their perspective on gaming and gamers is different. And I think that's why they do make kind of more content. Obviously, they do have kind of more platforms, they have a bit more money. Yes. Yeah. A lot more yes. money. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I think a lot of it is to do with the attitude uh, as well, because I think they've kind of embraced it uh, a lot more. I mean, is it because, like, I, I, and I, I don't know, I'm just sort of throwing this out to the panel, really, but is there something in that sort of different, because you talk about Call of Duty and the sort of jock culture, and you, know, you look at something like American football, which is very much massive men doing man things, and the women are on the sidelines doing this. Mm. There is sort of an a sort of unreconstructed masculinity that is celebrated more there that maybe makes it an easier leap to video games? Well, for things like, I suppose, like Not all sp the videos, sport games yeah. and things like Call of Duty, then certainly it's... Sort but of also you know, League of Legends and things like that, is it, that it, it tends to skew very male in terms of the squads and things. It's still yeah. quite rare to get female players. So I don't know if that's... Yeah, well, that's anywhere, like, in any sports, it's quite yes, rare to sure, get female sure. players. But, um, yeah, I just think it's a lot to do with the att attitude and cash. Yeah, I'm glad you said that, and especially before you talked about BAFTA, because my youngest brother, he's 10 years old, yeah. he's, I think he's watching now, and um, <laughs> he uh, participated in the BAFTA, Young, the BAFTA Young Designers game. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, wow. yeah, that's amazing. 10 years old, you know, amazing. so, like, and he, I said to him, if you don't win this, just get off to America, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got my name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but anyway, but thanks for that, you guys. Yeah, yeah, right, thank cheers. you. And we should say there is there is a big gaming event here every year. It's EGX, which is run by Eurogamer, the company I used to work yeah. for, up at the Birmingham NEC, yes. and it is absolutely massive. And I kind of wish if there are any TV executives who are still going, oh, it's games a thing, and there are enough people just go to go EGX, to yeah, go, yeah. and uh, it's just huge rooms full of people. But also to see kind of the variety of games. Mm. I mean, like mm. the the weird kind of left field games room where they have like weird yeah. games that are made out of like pingy doorstops yeah, where like yeah, they yeah. go like really weird like chef's table on Netflix but like games yeah. they're like fashion something out of twigs yeah. and plants well, like um, well the rest event that they've just had they have yeah. that in London which is more the indie game thing so that's, that's yeah. a great event as well yeah yeah all right so we have, can we have someone up there there we go yeah right. um, I was just wondering if there are any uh, technical limitations to showing games because um, I used to work for CITV yeah. admittedly I'm going back about seven years and there was always issues with kind of like Resolution, mm -hmm. and refresh rates, and yep. Like yeah, it's a nightmare. Aside from content, yeah. lag, lag, <laughs> lag. lag. It's really, it's really, really difficult, and it's still something we've not solved on great. But after three series, it's still with certain games, mainly platformers and racing games, where you know a couple of frames makes a huge difference to turning a corner or driving into a wall for it or getting stuck in a tunnel, like the yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> by the time you've pressed turn right, it's turned right, and then. So yeah. it is very difficult, and it's still something that we struggle with, um, depending on the platform. Um, one way we get around it, um, it, with permission, I should, that big disclaimer, but we can use emulation, which then means we can run it on PC, and that helps bypass it sometimes, but it's still, it's still tricky, because the way, the way Go 8-Bit's set up is that that desk that we all sit at, underneath that is the biggest fire hazard you've ever seen. Oh, my God. Which is all of the kit for all of the things, but then that... 
Um, no one who sits there is ever having children again. No. <laughs> so much. No, but plenty of leg cramp. Huge amount of leg cramp. But fr from that, the, then into the floor, underneath that revolving stage is a massive pipe of stuff that goes to the middle and down into the floor, because the studio, the floor's raised, goes into the floor, then that goes all the way back out up to the gallery. Then from the gallery, once it's got there, they send us a picture of it to the big screen, and that's what we play games on. And by the time it's got there... It takes it's 42 eight. minutes. It's 42 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Um, so, yeah. It, it is tricky. You have to work out what's, ha what's happened 42 minutes ago. It's very, very... I'm very good at preempting how I should play a game in about half a second's time. I'm <laughs> very good at that. <laughs> I do spend a lot of time sort of saying, oh, what, what are they playing it on? Has it got an Xbox controller? Do you think it's on a PC? Yeah, it's on a PC. Shh! <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, I, yeah, it's a different world. We, I was just trying to get games companies to send me, like, high-resolution quick times. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, yeah. yeah, yeah. Just fake yeah, it, it's fine. Like, um, 2000 yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we should do, just get pre-recorded gameplay and we just all do that for two minutes. There's a lot of people on Twitter shouting at us going, why can't you play the games? <laughs> but it's also it's that weird... Me, like, I'm not supposed to be able to. It's that weird thing, though, also, when you see, like, people who are supposed to be gamers playing video games with controllers and it's not plugged in and they're, like, hitting the buttons yeah, in this yeah, weird yeah, way, yeah, like, yeah. fake game controller. Please, if you ever do, like, a drama, just look at someone's hands, cos it's really <laughs> off-putting. It's like, yeah. no one plays like that. Why are you doing it? All right, any, another question? Uh, yes, someone down here? Hi. Um, Hi. My name's Matthew Thomas, and I work for a consultancy called MTM. And I was wondering, uh, with commissioning decisions, it should really just boil down to audiences, right? Obviously, forgiving prejudices or whatever attitude you might have towards yep. gamers. Um, there's quite a lot of information out there, whether it be audiences on YouTube or Twitch or just like the game sales figures for how many people have bought a game in a certain uh, country. Mm -hmm. When you're going to commissioners with that type of information, what's kind of missing from that? Because it's, it, it sounds like you could be able to make quite a convincing uh, 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 Case study. Uh, so, I mean, it's a case of going, well, there's, here's the amount of people who watch it here. Here's the amount of money that's uh, awash in the industry. But until you can say, this is how many people watch this type of show, you can't. They, you know, someone's got to take a punt. No, you know what I normally get, which is like, oh, the only people who want to watch appointment interview TV are like between 50 and 60. So can you do something that might like appeal to that? And you're sort of like, well, no. Um, I mean, but then it becomes like a weird sort of self-fulfilling prophecy because then if you're only making content that will appeal to that demographic, then they're the only people who are going to watch the TV anyway. And then in 20 years, they're just going to be sort of dead. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's tough. It feels, because <laughs> I've had a sort of slightly different but similar experience, because I came to go 8-bit quite late. Um, I wasn't there when it was all Edinburgh and that. Um, uh, so I wasn't anything to do with the commissioning process. That was your problem. Yes. Um, uh, but I am in this double act called Scummy Mummies, which is performing at the Underbelly uh, oh, on Wednesday the 16th of May. <laughs> <laughs> you got a flyer? Wow. Have you ground. got a flyer? I've got flyers, She's actually. got flyers. Got flyers. <laughs> I've got flyers on the table. Um, uh, yes, so we're uh, incredibly funny, and yet uh, <laughs> we we are having meetings with TV people where they're saying, well, you know, because our comedy is, is ostensibly about parenting, it's really a lot of knob jokes and drinking, um, but they kind of say, well, parenting is that a bit niche, you know? We, we just, we just <laughs> so uh, what? We so heard, is parenting niche? We have heard the word niche a lot from multiple yeah. people on television oh and God. radio. That's Ooh. the silliest thing I've ever heard. Um, and that is that is very hard for us, and it does feel possibly a bit sexist. <laughs> because, you know, and I usually say to them, but well, you know, I think that cars are quite niche. Uh, I, you know, if you'd said to me ten years ago, uh, would you like to watch a show about making cakes in a tent? Uh, I think quite a lot of men would say, well, that's too niche for yeah. me. Yeah, that's too um, niche. Ballroom Sorry. dancing. <laughs> <laughs> ballroom dancing, relatively niche compared to parenting. Yeah. Yet it's done yeah. quite well, the old Strictly. Mm. Um, so, so I find that a difficult thing yeah. to hear. And I, I think my experience has been based on your experience as well, oh, it's not just about games, it's not just about something that a lot of the population either are doing or have had done to them. Uh, it's, it's... Yeah, and, al and also the point is, is that on, online, what's happened is, is people have found, they, people can find whatever they want, so they can find all their niche things. So what's happened is that the internet has stolen all the people away from TV because they can go get exactly what they want. Mm. So TV now is trying to, is reacted by that, to that by making... If, if people are trying to react to that by making things broader, then that's the mistake. Because actually, like with, with Bake Off, you kind of go, 
it's a programme about cakes, uh, or it's a programme about cars. You go, OK, that's fine, because those things getting. exist and people aren't yeah. so limited yeah. that people will go into something if it's a good programme. Yeah. I watched, I watched the gardening programme with um, Alan Titchmarsh. He's a lovely man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we have, we have a podcast as well. It is actually the UK's number one uh, <laughs> family. Well, it's like a say. seamless segue. Yes, yes. yes. Um, but, um, but we actually have a lot of comments in our iTunes reviews and also people message us all the time who aren't parents. And they say, look, I'm not a parent. Um, but I just really like your show because it's funny. But it's also showing insight back, you know, into something that maybe you don't know about. Yeah. So, like, as a non-parent, you're like, this is fascinating anyway. Well, our favourite comment was from a woman who wrote to say, I really like your show because I'm not a parent, but it reminds me to take my pill. <laughs> <laughs> I have friends you have, you, have, you have stopped someone having a baby. That's that your makes claim me so to happy. fame, right? Yeah. <laughs> I've saved someone. To yeah. someone's, life. someone's life. But, yeah, even before I could drive, I used to, uh, I used to like... Um, I used to like the car reviews on Top Gear. I didn't like all the scripted stuff. I like car reviews. I like people talking about stuff that they're interested in. Mm. But it's, it's even, having if, that... even if I don't necessarily understand it. But that's the, that's the switch also in presenting as well. You know, whereas you do have you know, the presenters, presenters, right, what am I doing today while I'm reading this thing? <laughs> what people love about YouTube is just passion, mm -hmm. right? Someone just completely nerding out about whatever weird crap that they're into. It's like watching Ray Mears when he's yeah. cooking some salmon. You're like, look at his little face. Yeah, he's yeah, so yeah. excited by that salmon. God yeah. bless him. I'm never going to do that. I'm never going to go into the wild or do any of those things. But it's quite a buzz. Like, passion is infectious. Yeah. And that's why people go to YouTube. That's why people, you know, want to see someone just being a complete and total nerd. And cookery shows as well, because cookery shows used to be, it's five grams of salt, it's 100 grams of flour, yeah. and now it's like, I'm going to make this gorgeous roasted saddle of lamb. If you want the, if you want the recipe, it's online. Yeah. You're like, I'm not going to make it. <laughs> I'm make it. I want to see you make it, yeah. and then eat a bit of it because you have to eat a bit of it at the end. If you don't, that's going to really. Oh, uh, I need that to. And uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, it's just about seeing stuff. You're exactly right. Mm. Yeah, exactly. That, I mean, that's your way in for the YouTube videos because that's you watching people eat, and the YouTube thing is people watching people play games. Well, I'm thinking of banning the whole parenting thing and just doing badminton, uh, I think. Sadminton, I've, I've worked out the format now. It's just me every week, yeah. one player badminton, the net, <laughs> and I just go, ready? And I serve it, and the camera cuts to no one on the other side as the shuttlecock lands. Still out. Oh. <laughs> Sadminton, <laughs> roll credits. <laughs> Excellent. I've, I'd watch that. I would watch it. Oh, you've got format rights now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Shall we have another audience question? I think we haven't had any from over here. Have we got the, there's a chat there. This isn't oh, awkward, it's, it's fine. It's probably best I don't use my mind, it's covered in sweat. I do one of my raps to fill. Yeah. Hello. Uh, you were saying just earlier about how, you know, the internet covers a niche. Do you think television can compete with that niche now? Because, of course, there's so many gaming channels which go into so many different things. It's not just Let's Plays. It could be reviews or in-depth analysis of the history of, like, certain consoles. Mm. Do you think television has got to a point where it can no longer compete with that niche, where there's just... OK, so, um, yes, there is some, like, super mega specialist deep dive for, like, kind of hardcore gamers. But you have to remember, like I was saying, like, gaming's a spectrum. So you've got, like... That sounds weird, because there was the spectrum. Sure, it's sure. confusing. Um, <laughs> so you have, like, the really kind of hardcore <laughs> gamers there. And then, you know, you have the kind of sort of... In between, like, maybe they play, like, a few more hours a week, have a general idea of, like, different games that are sort of, like, coming out. And then you have, like, super uber light like, whereas maybe they just buy fifa once a year or play candy crush or something like that so it really is there's a wide kind of birth so like yes the hardcore are catered for they want to know everything now what is it like go really in depth let's have a one hour live show talking about i don't know kratos's muscles sure. and his anger management i don't know see super nerdy covered um, but what you want to be aiming for is somewhere kind of in between, you know, where you can sort of be talking about like some of the biggest titles and kind of how they're pushing technology or, or like what they're doing, having sort of general kind of reviews and things like that. That there is definitely, I think, a space for that there with having like good production company, sorry, uh, production values and getting access that perhaps some of the smaller sites couldn't get. So like with the BBC, you know, we spent an entire day with Hideo Kojima, which if you know, you know anything to do with gaming, that's quite a big thing. And that happened because we went there and we're like, oh, hi, we're from the BBC. And, you know, that kind of opens an awful lot of doors. Um, so I definitely think there's a space there. And I definitely think there's... People want to know about kind of what's coming out, 
but in quite a, in a light sort of way, that kind of bracket of gamers. Like, you know, this God of War game is coming out. It's going to be really great for kind of these reasons. You know, maybe do a little feature or something around that. Uh, I mean, look at things like um, Gadget Man. I mean, it, it was like tech light, you know, where, I mean, maybe not to that sort of degree, but it was more just about kind of showing what's there. And you don't really have to go into like super depth or like review it or where obviously it is off, you know, relies a lot on Richard Anuade's, you know, sort of sense of humor or whatever. But that kind of uh, level of just sort of almost explaining that these things are kind of out there and you can kind of deep dive a little bit into it. I definitely think there's a, a place for that on television for sure. I think also that there's, it's, it's something I'm trying, to, I'm, I'm trying to work out where I sit with it because I'm because I'm doing more stuff online now. But it, I think maybe it's unhelpful to think of it as it, as them having to compete or catch up or do a thing in, yeah. the, in the same way that telly didn't kill radio or cinema. They just became different things and they found what they were. And Netflix hasn't killed. It's a different sort of thing. Yeah. I think I think it's okay for all those things to exist. And I think I think you will find that deeper stuff online because people can dive into that. And if if only six thousand people care about the internal wiring of a Commodore 64, no. all 6,000 people who care about that can enjoy that and that's okay. Or you can try to make something much broader and have a larger audience for it. It can be any of those things. So I, I don't think it needs to compete. I think they can make different things. Mm. But what I do think, having been on the journey we've been with on Go 8 Beer and the Spinner Show DLC and all of the other stuff we, we've tried and are trying to get away, is that um, t TV could be braver in representing games better because there are a lot... That, that thing that is film 2018 but for games could be a thing that exists. That thing that is pure gameplay like Go 8 that could be the thing that exists. There absolutely could be a thing on something like BBC3 or E4 where YouTubers and pro gamers mess about the target at a younger audience. There could be a thing for kids on CBBC that is yeah. gameplay and school teams competing on a thing. There's loads of shows TV could make using games that it doesn't and probably won't make. Because there's not like one solution, basically. There's no. not like a gaming show that's going to do everything. Indeed. So there's, lo there's lots of shows about games telly isn't making, and it's a shame it's not because there is an audience for it. But it doesn't have to try to <coughs> steal the specific audience of a specific sort of thing online because that's just doing what it does. Mm. Agreed. All right. Have we got one or two more? Do you think there's someone right next to you? I mean, that's convenient. That's easy to have a <laughs> microphone across. Um, I haven't done a lot of these games, and I must admit, I started with Space Invaders. You mm. had to put sixpence in the slot, and it was really <laughs> good fun. Um, well, and then was I a couple of years ago, presumably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I graduated on to SimCity. Um, but after all that, I met a friend in Kendall, who was one of these gamers that play the online kind of everybody joins up together and they're all playing a different part and it's like a big networking system. And I yeah. just wonder whether there's some kind of drama that could be developed for television which would sort of incorporate that kind of gaming because what struck me as being really amazing but perhaps rather mad is that it got so intense that somebody was sending in viruses and he said he had to completely reload his computer system and before he'd even got the antivirus up there, mm. one of these viruses came hacking in. And this is because people get so involved with what they're doing that it actually becomes larger than real life. Mm -hmm. So I think possibly there is a drama there. I don't know what you think about developing I, things. You could that probably direction. do one about Eve. Yeah. Jeez, you could do one about Eve. That's absolutely batshit mental. I can't think of a better way of saying it. What was that? Yeah. Really? For anyone who Eve. doesn't know, will you explain uh, what, what on earth so is it, going on? So it's kind of like this sort of online... <sighs> It's quite hard to explain. It's technically it? an MMO, isn't yeah. it? So it's technically loads of people playing this game online. Together. And it's about spaceships. Spaceships and resources. And then the people are part of like different factions and stuff. And then basically there's been like two different occurrences, I think, where there's been this sort of like horrible betrayal and people because like if you lose all your ship, you lose all your stuff in the games, so all this stuff that people have spent years getting. And it, it turned into this basically giant space battle thing and yes. yeah it was um, but it's not like a shooty guns battle no. it's all about politics and economics and it's people form alliances and basically it is it is brexit in space is yes it's it. brexit in space yeah. there you go we've written it for you brexit in space done yeah. writes itself <laughs> it is like black mirror yeah, yeah. I, I, charlie brook has definitely played yeah. eve online i think yeah. uh yeah mm -hmm. yeah what do you do you think uh, well, I, I, I mean, the, the yes is the short answer. Yes, there could absolutely be dramas and comedy. I, I happen to, through through sketch comedy, there's uh, guys Jack Bernhardt and uh, Toby Wilson who were in a sketch group. They, um, they've, they've won BAFTA, so they're writing for Gumball, Amazing World of Gumball, which is an amazing cartoon if you've not seen it. Um, and they've got an incredible sitcom about a bunch of guys who play games together. Um, Henry Dalton, who worked on Great Big DLC, again, he's been over to America. He did it to, what was the, Future Duck? Future Duck? Future Duck. Future Duck. 
I've said that too many times for that to mean anything else. Future hugs. But it, um, he's very successful and written for lots of things. Um, and he's got a sitcom which is about a team, sort of a ragtag bunch that get together and try to compete in esports. Um, they're both incredible scripts and they've shown them to everybody and nobody will even touch it because it's games. They're, they're really struggling to get, to move those things forward. So I think it's the same thing we were talking about is, like, they're really funny. And actually, the esports one, particularly the Henry's one, it's about five people who aren't very good at games and have their own lives and their backstories. Games happens to be the thing they're trying to do together, but it's, it's, it's cool runnings, is what it is. It's, a, it's cool. It, <laughs> but everyone back then was really into toboggans and... Sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. But it is, that's sort, that's sort of the tone of this thing. It's, it, it's, <laughs> it's a bunch of misfits trying to do a thing that they really... There's no reason to assume that that would be the thing that they would do, but they, in spite of it, they managed to come good. Um, so it's, it's about human triumph, uh, but... No one Again, cares. as soon as you attach the word like <laughs> games to it, people it's a bad are like, headline, oh, isn't it? yeah. It's like the <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> poison. Yeah. It's really hard. <laughs> one more question, James. Do we think? Yeah. All right, over here. Uh, is this on? Mm -hmm. um, I actually had to write it on my hat because there was so much going on. What about the influence of other media onto TV programs? Because um, I think Steve mentioned about TV kids. I mean, Nightmare was pretty much a role-playing game sure. ahead of its so time. Good. Nightmare was the best television programme ever made. Uh, I mean, yes. Yeah, hands yes. down. You don't need to talk about that. Apart from Go Ape Bit, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, but, like, when you, you were saying about TV shows, I mean, you had Captain N, which was obviously advertising Nintendo games, mm -hmm. and the Game Boy that came out. You had films like The Wizard, which premiered uh, Super Mario Bros. 3, and then you get... I know people are going to hate me, but I do actually like the Super Mario Bros. movie, but it seems like... Bob Hoskins, can't bad, go wrong. If the, you know, if there's good or bad movies <laughs> or TV shows, does that... Or references like such on the Big Bang Theory, do you think that has an influence on all the games that come out? I mean, I think, yeah, obviously Re Ready Player One is a really interesting uh, example uh, of that recently. Um, so we're actually, like, one of the shows we did uh, was about kind of... Well, we're using Ready Player One and looking at the sort of dystopian future that it created and then sort of saying, like, what other kind of video game dystopian futures and how likely they are, because we're really upbeat like that. <laughs> um, but I think stuff like that, you know, especially having, like, a show... Well, sorry, a, mo a movie, you know, where Spielberg is attached, you know, it's got a huge sort of budget. Showing off virtual reality in that way is... Fantastic. Wow, no, I mean, I think for, for the general, you know, populace, it was quite fascinating for them to sort of see what potentially, OK, could, you know, happen or whatever. Sure. But, yeah, definitely sort of... I think the technology side of it certainly is really interesting about kind of educating sort of, like, the populace. And, I mean, I don't know. So I don't know where I really went with that. No, but games what... are so advanced now. Like, when you had Tron or uh, War Games or anything like that, you were like, oh, what could be? What yeah. could be? And now yeah. you're like, look what is. It's crazy. I can't see what's next. I just think yeah. it's a bit, you know, everyone's kind of, you know, what, what film would you make about it? Well, Ready Player One, probably, yeah. Yeah. Or video game adaptions do it more so, you know, because sometimes you get really good films and really rubbish video game adaptions, and that might have an effect on it. Well, certainly the other way around, like yeah. film versions of video games are notoriously. Terrible. But that's that, at least that's a kind of at least that's the movie industry referencing the success of games in a way that television doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or doesn't seem to. Mm. Well, well uh, I think that's I think it's about all we've got time for. Um, we do want to say thank you so much uh, to the Royal Television Society uh, for putting this event on, which I hope is like a is like a be the fact that we're even having this conversation. Uh, I think is is a really good mm. thing. And um, thank you also to ITB Studios for uh, letting us have the event here. And um, this is actually Lorraine's dressing room. Um, <laughs> that she kindly gave up uh, for this evening, so that's uh, very nice. Um, and thank can you, I of course. Just, yes. Can I just say, just quickly, uh, before we kind of shoot off and say goodbye, um, so obviously, like, one of my main passions in life is trying to get more gaming content on TV. Please feel free, if you have any, like, questions or anything or you want to have a conversation about anything, find me on Twitter. I'm, like, more than happy to, like, have a chat because it's kind of... Well, I think we all, we all really want to see more content on there, so, like, very happy to have a conversation and, yeah, and give time to that. Julia. Yeah. What, yeah. What, is your, what is your Twitter? Uh, so it's um, at It's Julia Hardy, so I-T-S Julia Hardy. Uh, Steve, where can people watch your things? I'll, I'll Google Steve McNeil and all the things will come up. It's the internet, mm. isn't it? Do you want them to see all of it, though? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just don't go via tour. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm on Twitter, Sam Pamphlon. 
that's that's really what I'm doing at the moment. <laughs> uh, I'm at home. <laughs> Pop round. Yeah. Yeah. Have a coffee. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm on Twitter at Ellie Gibson. I'm on Instagram at Scummy Mummies. Uh, I am performing at the Underbelly on the 16th of May. It's just down the road. It's it's very reasonably priced. It's very very funny and it's it's not niche. So do. <laughs> <laughs> I promise. So do uh, come and see it. Well, I think that's about it. Thank you very much. And thank you very much, everyone, for coming, everyone on YouTube, for watching. Thank you. Thank you very much.